Hello. My name is Lena, and <laughs> I'm going to be doing something that I know I need to be doing. God has placed it on my heart for a long time. And that is just being candid and sharing where I am in my journey. Um, again, my name is Lena. I am a survivor of abuse of, of sorts. I say of sorts because, you know, it's just difficult to say those things. But I just have seen God rescue me time and time again, heal me time and time again. And I also know that there are other survivors out there. And I don't want us to give up. I say this after almost completely giving up just a few days ago to the point where I could have not been here, be here any longer. But Jesus is seeing me through that. For the first time in my life, I found myself in a room with other Christian women and I think about three out of everyone in that room were also survivors, including, not um, adding me would be four, but I walked into a space not thinking that I would find Christians who openly were talking about things like dissociation and trauma, and I was amazed, relieved, and terrified all at the same time because for me as a Christian as a Christian woman the culture of you know you're a Christian you're supposed to be happy you're supposed to you know have it all together all the time the if you're sad it's because you're not praying enough if you have trauma it's because you're allowing the devil to do this or that and through the years I have heard so many things and it honestly kept me silent and it has negatively influenced my relationship with the with God um, and my the trauma started before school before preschool and it also happened at church it happened at home it happened with a lot of people <laughs> oh my gosh all I can do is laugh but I say that because the whole point of enduring, not crying, not complaining, and then it happening at church, and then with people, with um, Sunday school teacher who would misuse um, the word of God and say things like trigger warning, women, Christian women don't get assaulted, and just a lot of things. So my belief in God came in, came to be, if I'm good, then this won't happen to me any longer. If I'm good, I won't have any pain. Like I used to pray and worship and fast so much as a child, as a young person, because I thought, okay, I'm sad, I'm hurting, that must be a sin. And I would spend hours in my room just praying and singing, and then I would fast and fast and fast. and it just developed this really deep loathing that was towards myself. And then this just, in my mind, it just became that this abuse was because I needed it because it was suffering for my purification. And it's just a whole long story, but it caused me to, at 15, leave the church. And, you know, nothing good happens when you leave when you leave the Lord, I shouldn't say leave the church. I mean, I just, I couldn't be good enough for God. So I just gave up and I went, I went wild. <laughs> but God in his faithfulness saved me. He saved me so many times. I'll go into details with that stuff later because I'm exhausted already just doing this much. Um, but I just, then after that, I just, I, I was okay. I could talk about the abuse a little bit 
like in my early 20s. I knew I wanted to do something to help other survivors, but then I started getting this mentoring and it wasn't good and I realized I started becoming more and more afraid and and then I remember one time I told another Christian about my flashbacks that I was having. And mind you, every time I come to God and I say, Lord, please heal me further. I'm ready for another layer of healing. I'll have like a series of memories and flashbacks. And they're excruciating. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I can sense God holding me through it. But the thing is, Whenever I would reach out with a new memory or some the flashbacks, the response I would get from other Christians was a lot of, you know, you're letting the devil hurt you. You need to pray more. It just, it felt, it was a lot of rejection. But also it was a lot of the fact that people just didn't understand. Like, if you've never experienced trauma to the point where, like, you're literally dissociated. You're literally, your your little child brain literally had to compartmentalize itself in order to survive. Like, and I'm realizing that, for example, I don't understand what it's like to lose a child. So I may, I may not be able to properly comfort someone or go through through the process of grieving with someone who has experienced that. So I totally understand. And again, our Christian culture a lot of the time is you can, you have, we have prosperity gospel for finances. I believe we have prosperity gospel for the emotions. Like if you're a good Christian, you'll never feel sad. You'll never be depressed. You'll never have any, like, no. And the thing for me, I know that there's a lot of lies that need to be worked out. I know that. And I know that I, I need I need the accountability with the come on Lena, you can keep working and to stop keep working at not believing the lies that the abuse instilled. But at the same time, sometimes you just need someone to listen and understand you. So I remember that one moment and it just shut me down and I just remember working so hard to not feel anything like, okay, I'm a bad Christian, I'm having these flashbacks, I have to work so hard so that I just shut all this stuff down and with that I also just completely shut down even more my emotions and that's where I am today still it's like I don't feel anything like I can start to cry and it will just stop and sometimes like I don't know it's just it made me unable to relate to God as well because I, I still struggle with that because it's like, how do I, you say cry out to me and you will save me, you will deliver me from my troubles, but it's like, I don't even know how to cry out. But he's teaching me. And one of the greatest moments of my life, of my healing, so far I know he's doing, he's weaving together something that I just can't see right now, but I can tell he's doing it. One of the things that he has done in my life is he's brought me back to the church where I was abused um, and it's been triggering and it's been difficult but the one thing I am seeing is just so much healing and love it's amazing it's amazing like I've never experienced this in a church before and it's amazing how the church where I was traumatized seems like it's going to be the church where I'm going to get healed, where I am being healed, and I'm just amazed. It was at one of this church's events that, wow, I, again, I entered that room thinking it was, you know, just a fun, you know, church event, but it turned out to be an evening of just deliverance and healing, and one girl started telling her story, and I was like, oh, I did not realize we were talking here and I just started crying like I couldn't handle it because I had so much repression and denial and like I don't talk about that I don't I don't acknowledge that I'm a good Christian now it doesn't bother me like it just blindsided me and 
again that evening people were talking about dissociation and how you know how it feels to not be able to remember like one girl said she said she couldn't remember parts of her childhood I'm like oh my gosh that's me <laughs> like I don't remember nothing <laughs> the stuff I do remember is like 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 oh my gosh I'll explain that in another <laughs> another video <laughs> but just to hear I'm like wow we're I'm not being shut down I'm not seeing people being judged or criticized or like that's evil no like people were openly talking about the realities of being traumatized in the light of Christ and I've never experienced that in all my years <laughs> I've had Christian counselors pass me around. I've had one pastor, literally when I told him I had PTSD, he literally yelled at me and shooed me away. I've had so much. But I also know that the church is full of people. And we're all broken. And I know I have been too quick when someone just needed compassion. So I know. And it's okay. We're, we're, we all have to learn and we all have to um, develop, uh, just develop compassion and the ability and the, the willingness to bear one another's um, griefs. Um, so all this, I just, I just wanted to come on here because it's amazing to me. And I know that there are other survivors who you're experiencing flashbacks. You're experiencing body memories. You're dissociated. Some of us, you may be dissociated into different like personalities, like abuse is real. It's not in your imagination. It's not, oh, if I was a better Christian, this, this, and this, and that, no. If someone were to, God forbid, you know, amputate some part, you know, if there was that, it was that kind of violence. And then would people say to you, like, why are you missing an arm? Just grow it back. <laughs> I feel like it's the same way when sometimes we, and even in the secular world, people do this too. It's like, why are you not over it? Get over it. Like, where's your willpower? Paul, he had a thorn in his flesh that the Lord didn't take away. The man who was blind, you know, he was born he was born that way, not because he sinned. And I'm not saying that God lets abuse happen to us because it's for his glory, but I'm just saying that we have to accept that abuse has consequences. It has consequences. It has consequences on the mind. It has consequences consequences relationally it has a lot of consequences not because we've done something wrong because it's a violent act that may have gone on for decades for some people or even if it was just one instance it has consequences and just like you wouldn't expect you know to to hew down a tree right you wouldn't expect to like hew down a tree and injure part of its tree trunk and just the, the root of where it grows from and expect it to blossom and 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 grow like any other tree no it takes care it takes more care it takes more nurture it takes more effort and all i just wanted to come on here and encourage other survivors that your flashbacks, the pain you may be feeling, those are all results of the violence you went through. Not of your lack of, not of your lack of being a good Christian. Faith is the fact that you have not left the Lord. Okay? You may, you may be like struggling with, oh, I'm horrible, I'm this, I'm that. Those are all the things that came from the abuse. It's not your fault. Yes, we have to pursue the Lord and take in the word daily. But the same way we wouldn't chastise, we wouldn't chastise, you know, a little one, you know, 
who is learning to walk and they stumble and they fall and we wouldn't chastise that little child the same way don't chastise yourself and I'm talking to myself too because I can beat myself up for days for days <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that it's not your fault abuse has real consequences that require healing God is not condemning you he loves you and is willing to walk at a slow pace with you and when others in the church or anywhere may make you feel like oh my goodness I'm just being bad that's a lie from the enemy that's a lie from the enemy you are fearfully and wonderfully made and if you whatever results you may have you are still in the from the whatever consequences may have come from the abuse you are still perfect in the father's hands and he's able to use you even in your brokenness you are not too broken and i want to encourage you to get whatever help you need i'm encouraging myself to do that too and to seek out people who are actually equipped <laughs> to help you not just because they're in a church not just because they're they, no you need to find people who are equipped with trauma because it's a real thing and i just want you to accept yourself accept yourself you're not to this or to that you are a child of god and i'm speaking to myself too so, Father God, I just thank you for who you are, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, and your power. Lord, please be with us on our journeys. Help us to not let go. Help us to not turn from you. Because if we just keep our eyes on you, you will continue to hold on to us. We do love you, even though sometimes the abuse makes us feel like, gosh, I guess I'm failing and I'm not really loving God. Yes, we do love you. Teach us what love is. Take away the ideas of violence that we have confused to be with love, to be loved. And help us not to 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 make you out to be this vengeful or mean God that you're not. All those lies, Lord. Help us to throw them away. And I thank you that you're gentle, you're kind, and you're patient. Have your way and be glorified. In Jesus name amen I want to encourage every survivor you know it's a high statistic I think it's every three and four for women and girls you probably know a survivor and you just haven't been able to connect to them on that level I really want to encourage us to Come and be together because in that closeness in that togetherness in that acceptance when you see someone else and you love that person but they've also been abused it also encourages you to love yourself so I want to encourage every one of us in the body of Christ who are survivors to find another survivor we all have our issues though that's the thing I know I, especially with when I feel afraid, I, I sometimes lash out, I sometimes get angry. When we're dealing with one another, please also know that we're not perfect. People can be triggering, but let's not be afraid to be around each other. Let's not be afraid to show what's really going on on the inside. So I just want to encourage survivors to come together and live life together and be free to live in the truth of flashbacks, association, whatever there was, whatever we're going through, and to walk together in healing. Because when we walk in the truth of what the consequences of the abuse really are, oh my goodness, that will bring so much more healing and glory to the Father. So be free from all pressure and guilt and lies in the name of Jesus. You are loved. I love you. And I know God is bigger. Jesus is bigger than anything we've been through. I still can't say the word, the actual word of what it is, but 
even that will be healed in Jesus name in me and in you and I just believe we all have a great purpose especially with this young generation so many kids are being misused so we need to allow the Lord to heal us even if it's little by little and even where we are we can make a difference so be blessed love 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 you are loved and you are beautiful and you are not what the abuse did to you it's just something that makes you a little bit more spicy <laughs> all right be blessed with much love i pray in jesus name be blessed bye thank you <laughs> like my teddy bear <laughs> okay bye <laughs>